Okay, so we have a script that we're happy with. You can go back and make as many edits and changes as you like. We've got music that we initially just made up from improvising a melody. Once we locked in that melody, we figured out what chords went underneath it and we wrote that out just in a lyric sheet with some letters over the top. Once we had that, we took that to a notation program and we turned it into sheet music, really, really basic sheet music, amazing. Now, the thing about notation software is that it can give you an audio um, file of your music. So you can use that with the melody turned on so that you can hear what it sounds like all together, or you can use that with the melody turned off so it can just play your accompaniment. Now, this might not be helpful if your accompaniment was super, super basic, like mine was just semi bruise um, but it can still give you sometimes just enough. And I use Sibelius. The Sibelius sounds are pretty okay. Um, so if I... Um, go to export and I export as an audio with the vocals turned off, I'm just going to get that accompaniment and that can be really helpful because I don't play piano so it can be really hard for me to play along and sing at the same time when I'm really concentrating on how to play piano. Um, so if I export that I can then sing over the top of that and record a very very basic demo. Now you can also use this for people to perform the music to or you give that sheet music to an accompanist to accompany a singer. Um, but if you're not happy with the level of um, complexity in your um, accompaniment, if you're not a piano player or you just, you just input basic semi-briefs, there are a couple, couple of options of what you can do. So the first option is that you can create, um, you can create um, backing tracks using your computer based on what you've input okay and this is a totally different skill set to be able to being able to play piano or being able to play an instrument proficiently because it is all about audio production and using the computer okay so if i was going to go down that method what i've done before is i've created lots of different layers in sibelius and done that same process of inputting the sheet music but making stuff up and doing like, um, okay, I'll do a drum line and just um, inputting some drums, uh, doing a bass line, just making up a bass line. Again, it's all about just making it up. And something that I do in Sibelius is use the ideas panel. So if you Google Sibelius ideas panel, you can search like say rock drum and it just gives you a basic rock drum pattern that you can copy and paste into your project. You can do the same with a bass line, copy, paste it in, make sure that it matches up with your harmony and what you've got going on, tweak it. Um, but it can be a really, really good starting point to creating basic arrangements. Once I've got that, I export not the audio, but the MIDI from that. Um, and I put that MIDI into a DAW. So a DAW is a digital audio workstation. So this is a very different program from a uh, notation program. This is somewhere where you can record music in, you can muck around with the MIDI. Some of them do have notation components as well, but you can use this to put in sounds. So like synthesizers, different sounds that go on top of your, what you've recorded in the notation. And so you can start to sort of um, create a backing track that sounds much more sophisticated um, than what you can create with just the basic Sibelius sounds or the basic um, sort of sounds that you're going to get from exporting straight from your notation program. So if you're going to do this, uh, you can do all the sort of um, making up of all the stuff in Sibelius, export to MIDI, put that into a DAW, I use Reaper, um, and then put the... Um, synths and all the sounds over the top of that you can come up with something that's pretty good with not that much um expertise just from dicking around and trying things out and going oh what if i did this and what if i had this effect all that kind of stuff it's really really fun and it might take you a little bit of learning but honestly like use the internet you know and again stick with whatever program you stick with and just build up your knowledge using that program. So I started using Reaper quite a while ago and you know I spent a lot of time googling how do I do this, how do I you know make sure that my microphone switched on, all this kind of really basic stuff but once you've spent time learning that system stick with the system and just keep building to your knowledge base. Um, the other option is to work with somebody to actually help you create that arrangement and 
Um, you might want to do this if you do want it to be performed by actual people. So the thing about creating uh, backing tracks using a door, using thin synthesizers, all that kind of stuff, is that you're just creating a backing track. So you're not actually creating, you know, what somebody might actually play because you might not actually have access to, you know, 17 people with all these kooky instruments that have all these effects on, you know what I mean? It's a very produced sound and it's not going to be something you're able to, you know, usually give to um, somebody to play. So if you do want somebody to play along with your musicians, you need to switch on your producer brain for just a second. So if you think your musical needs to have a orchestra, an orchestra with 40 musicians playing and that's how your musical should sound, that's great. But when you're starting out, you might not have access to an orchestra that has 40 musicians with a brilliant, amazing sound. You might be able to create that using the previous method, using the DAW or just, you know, arranging it all in Sibelius and exporting it, um, all that kind of stuff and using backing tracks to start with, but um, if you don't know how to arrange for orchestra, you're still gonna need help with that, okay? So um, when I'm thinking about it from a producer point of view, I'm thinking, you know, what's gonna be the cheapest option for somebody to put on my show or the most accessible option? And nine times out of 10, I would personally say that is with a pianist. So a pianist can create a lot of different sounds. It's super basic. It's one person um, and it's very, very standard for music theater. It's very standard for music theater shows to have a piano vocal score, even if it's intended to be done with an orchestra in the long run. So I personally think it's always a great idea to get a piano vocal score as part of your assets. Um, so, for Robot Pigs, I wanted it to be able to be accompanied by a pianist. I do not play piano, but I have written the music, okay? So I've got it all in Sibelius, I've got the melody, I've got the harmony, I've got how it all works together, I've got my audio recordings of myself performing it on my crappy little piano with my crappy little piano playing, and I want somebody to help me arrange that accompaniment to take it to the next level, okay? So what I did was I reached out on some different online platforms, um, seeing if I could pay somebody to arrange it for me. Now, you can sometimes find uh, collaborators who are willing to work with you in collaboration, so not for a fee, and then be included as a creative on that project, and therefore, if that project goes on to receive any income, that they will take a profit from that. Um, I would say whatever way you want to do it, and whichever way that you're working with your collaborators, just be super, super clear. And it's always a good idea to have collaborator contracts or things just written up so everyone knows exactly where they stand, because it would be really, really terrible if somebody spent weeks and weeks working on some arrangements for you or some music for you, and then they thought they were going to you know, get X, Y, Z, and then turns out you didn't ever expect to, you know, intend to give them X, Y, Z. It can get really, really messy with intellectual property, all that kind of stuff. So just be super, super clear. So I looked for a piano arranger and I gave them all of my materials. So everything that we've done from the previous step. So I've given them the script. I've given them the sheet music in Sibelius that we did by just putting in those semi-brief chords. I've given them the audio, um, files of me just singing along and I've also given them some notes about what I think it might sound like and some direction of how each section might be, where it builds in intensity, where it comes back and is quite vulnerable. Um, and on top of that, I've also sort of decided, do I want this to one day be performed by an orchestra or a band? Or is this piano score going to be the end goal and this is going to be the final arrangement for the piece? Because that can sometimes influence um, how the arranger does the arrangement. Other things that can influence it are the skill level of your accompanist that you intend to play it. So if you're um, writing a musical for high schools, and you think that high school musicians might be the ones to accompany it, I probably would recommend against creating super, super, super complex piano arrangements that then aren't accessible for a high school piano player to play. So there's all these little things that you've got to think about through your producer brain of 
What are your goals with this show? Who are the people that are going to be performing it? Who's it for? Um, and then how does that influence what you're writing? So always sort of trying to think about the bigger picture, even when we're breaking it up into these smaller sections. So I have got the piano arrangements back from the arranger, super, super amazing. Um, I can then use that to create a, um, like a Sibelius sounds audio output. So before when we were output, uh, exporting the audio from Sibelius and it was just the audio of the accompaniment, I can now do that, but with the arrangement from the piano player that I have paid for. So I now have backing tracks, I now have sheet music, I've now got um, a lot more of those things that I need to create um, the show. Because when you create a show, you, you don't just need the show in your head and you just don't need the script. You need what I referred to as assets, which are all of the things that you're going to need practically to be able to either put it on or for somebody else to be able to put it on. So if somebody else wants to put on your show and you just send them the script, they're not going to be able to then um, communicate the music to the musicians and get the singers to be able to learn the songs. They're going to need the sheet music. They may sometimes request backing tracks from you. All of these things, they may request... Um, demos so that they can hear what it sounds like and decide if they want to put your show on. So collecting these assets is really, really important. And now that we're coming to the final stages, it is super important that you keep this all very neat, very organized. And um, that brings us to the end of this part, which is talking all about um, creating arrangements, working with a collaborator, creating um, synthesize or synthetic uh, backing tracks using uh, digital instruments, all that kind of stuff. I've not really gone into the details of the how. Um, all of that stuff can be researched independently, but this is just like a little roadmap of what have I got to do next, okay? So we started off with planning. We wrote our first draft of a script. We just made it up. We sang some melody and we just made up a bit of a melody. We set that to chords, to our harmony. We notated that as letters over our lyrics. We transferred that into a notation program where we actually put in the chords as they would be. Now we've taken that and we've either expanded upon that to make a digital arrangement, um, a backing track using digital instruments, or we have taken this to um, somebody else who's got more expertise in this particular instruments that you're looking to have play. So I took it to a pianist to create a piano arrangement. If you're writing a folk musical and you really want to have an acoustic guitar, a violin and a cello or a double bass, you know, you're not going to take it to a pianist. You're going to take it to somebody who specializes in, you know, small chamber folk arrangements. They're going to be able to arrange your music. They're not writing your music. You've already written the melody. You've already written the harmony, okay? What they're doing is they're arranging and rearranging, taking all those elements that you have created and putting them in a different order to create something that is much more um, proficient and reflective of the initial idea, okay? And as long as you um, credit these people, it's okay to work with other people. I think that there's a lot of pressure to have to do everything yourself. And when you don't have access to billions of dollars, it can feel like you've got no choice but to do everything yourself. But when you see people who work on West End, work on Broadway, they don't write the show and orchestrate it and arrange it and, you know, play the instrument and create the demo tracks and mix it and master it. Do you know what I mean? They're doing one thing. They're writing the music and then they work with an arranger. They work with an orchestrator. They work with a vocal arranger. They work with somebody to engrave that music and transcribe it, copy it. You know, all these different jobs that exist to create a product. So if you're thinking, oh my gosh, it's so crazy, it's so overwhelming, don't worry about it because you're trying to do 20 people's jobs. So like just give yourself some slack and just take it one step at a time, okay? So this step is about taking your music, which you've gotten to the most complex stage that you can, and working with somebody else that you're going to credit, that you're going to pay, that you're going to collaborate with, whatever arrangement you come up with and honour that. And you're going to use that person's expertise or whatever method you're using and take that music to the next level where it sounds like I'm happy with that as a final product, okay? Once you've got your final product, you're ready for the next step. See you in the next video.